Okay, now we get to the most controversial portion of the evening, uh, and that is facts about transgenderism. So this, of course, is what the left is very upset about, because every time I say that a man is a man and a woman is a woman, and a woman can't magically become a man, and a man can't magically become a woman, and no, I will not call you a woman if you are not a woman, and no, I'm not going to describe you as she if you are not, in fact, a biological she, people on the left get very uptight. So I will, not, I will reserve my opinions on all of this until the end, although you just heard them, but I will... <laughs> These are, I'm going to give you some facts now, okay? These are not disputable facts, for the most part, okay? So if you dispute the facts, you can, you can cite the studies and you can argue with the authors of the studies. I'm going to give you facts that come not from me, but from studies and from medical literature and from reviews, okay? And then you can argue with those. Okay, this is undisputed. There are two sexes. There are not nine, there are not 11, there are two, okay? If you have a Y chromosome, If you have a Y chromosome, then you are typically male. People without a Y chromosome are typically female. We all learned this in fifth grade biology. Variation may exist in a tiny percentage of the population. This would make you intersex. It would not necessarily make you a person of the opposite sex. Okay, transgender advocates, however, don't even care about the biology. What they claim is that no evidence must be shown of any chromosomal anomaly in order for you to claim that you're transgender. I can be a full-on... XY male, a full biological male, and if I say that I am a female, you must now call me she. I am a transgender person and you must call me she. Right? In order to achieve this bizarre conclusion, transgender advocates have to create a new category different from sex, because obviously this is not going to work. You can't fool anybody by saying that a, a woman is a man, man is a woman. So instead what you have to do is you have to create a new word, right? We'll call it gender. Right? We'll call it gender. Gender, in their view, is about maleness or femaleness. Right, these social constructs of maleness or femaleness, an entirely subjective category, not linked to biology. But separating maleness or femaleness from genetic influence is scientifically illiterate, of course. To say that a biological male is a gendered female is a basic contradiction in terms. Right, a biological male is a gendered male. He may be an effeminate male. He may be a feminine male. He is still a male. Right, and it's very easy to prove this. Okay? If, if a man were to experience some sort of accident that changed his hormonal balances, it would not make him a woman. Right? Whether or not he identified as a woman, if a man had an accident and, and for some terrible, terrible accident he got injured in the genitals and suddenly he didn't have the male appendages anymore, this would not make him a woman. This would make a man who experienced a terrible accident. Okay, a biological male may have feminine characteristics. He is still a biological male. Richard Lippa writes in the textbook, Gender, Nature, and Nurture, quote, Some researchers have argued that the word sex should be used to refer to the biological status of being male or female, whereas the word gender should be used to refer to all the socially defined, learned, constructed accoutrements of sex, such as hairstyle, dress, nonverbal mannerisms, and interests. However, it is not at all clear to what degree differences between males and females are due to biological factors versus learned and cultural factors. Okay, other facts about transgenderism that are inconvenient for transgender advocates to mention. First, most, the idea that transgenderism is a condition that cannot be changed or, and, and that people do not change with regard to their own views of their own biology and with regard to their views of their own sex is not true. The vast majority of children who claim to be transgender when they are children, pre-puberty, do not end up being transgender when they grow up. Okay, according to University of Toronto professor James Cantor's studies, two-thirds of children who feel transgender outgrow their desire to transition sex by puberty. Another recent paper by endocrinologist Paul Cruz, biostatistician Lawrence Meyer, psychiatrist Paul McHugh puts that number at 80%. Okay, transgender advocates also claim that transgender suicide rates, which are extraordinarily high, which is just an incredible tragedy. Now, by the way, when, I, when I'm saying all this, the reason I'm saying all this is because I think facts matter, not because I don't have sympathy for people who are suffering from something that really is, it, it must be, truly terrifying, must be truly difficult to deal with. What I'm suggesting is that we need better solutions than blaming society for this problem, because the problem is not with society in large measure. The problem is largely with a, a mental condition. Okay, transgender, suicide, transgender advocates claim that transgender suicide attempt rates, which run at about 40% over the lifetime, which is extraordinarily high, suicide attempt rates in the United States, among other populations, run at about 4%, that they are a result of discrimination, which results in depression. A study from professors at the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention and the UCLA School of Law Williams Institute found 46% of transgender men, which is women who believe they're men, and 42% of trans women, men who believe they're women, attempt suicide over the course of their lives. The study also does point out allegedly high levels of discrimination against people. And no one is in favor of discrimination against trans people. No one is in favor of treating trans people badly. I just did an interview with a Blair White, who's a transgender woman, meaning a biological man who believes he's a woman. And the interview was all about whether I should use pronouns that Blair White wanted me to use, whether I should call Blair White a she. It was a very cordial interview. I explained my position and everything was fine. 
We can agree to disagree on these particular points. If it makes you suicidal because I say that you are your biological sex, my suggestion is that there is something deeper going on than merely what I am saying to you. By the way, the, the linkage between quote unquote bullying or disagreement and, and suicide is not proved at all in, in wide varieties of population. Right? If the idea were that people who are bullied commit suicide at a higher rate, you would assume, for example, that the black suicide rate would be incredibly high because racism against blacks still exists in our culture. The black suicide rate is significantly below the white suicide rate in the United States. In fact, suicide seems to be uh, a privilege of the wealthy. If you go to poor, poor countries, suicide rarely exists. It's really only enriched countries in the Western Hemisphere where you see high suicide rates. Okay, how about the idea that discrimination, though, is causing the suicide? Well, the same study from the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention and the UCLA School of Law investigated people's suicide rates if they were identified, if they were identified as a member of the opposite sex or a member of the sex to which they claimed membership. Okay, so the, suicide, uh, the suicidality rate among transgender women who say people identify them as transgender regularly is about 45%, according to the study. But the suicidality rate among transgender women who say they are occasionally or never identified by others as transgender is... 40%. Right? So in other words, a man who believes is a woman goes through all the surgeries, has all the hormone treatments, and no one can even identify this person as a woman, still has a suicide attempt rate of 40%. And the suicidality rate among female to male transgenders is identical, whether or not people can identify them as transgenders. The evidence that transgender surgery, by the way, mitigates suicide risk is, is mixed. Right? It is mixed. There are studies that say yes, there are studies that say no. A 2004 review of more than 100 international studies by the University of Birmingham found, quote, no robust scientific evidence that gender reassignment surgery is clinically effective. A cohort study from Sweden released in 2011 covering sex reassignment surgeries from 1973 to 2003 found that transgender surgery recipients were still 19 times more likely to die by suicide than the general population and stated that, quote, sex reassignment, although alleviating gender dysphoria, may not suffice as treatment for transsexualism. So, everything that I just said, these are all facts. You can argue with the studies, you can argue that the statistics are not right, but you actually have to argue with why those are wrong. You can't just say that my opinion is wrong because my facts are wrong. You need to argue that the facts are wrong themselves. Okay, you actually have to argue with the facts. Now, here are my opinions. You may have gotten hints of them throughout the speech, but here are my clear opinions based on this. You can even argue with the, it's fair for you to argue with the conclusions I'm drawing. You can say that the premises I'm laying out do not lay to these conclusions. You may say that the facts that I'm laying out aren't sufficient to reach these conclusions, and then you have to explain why. What you don't get to do is say, I don't like your opinion, therefore I will ignore all of your facts, right? My truth is more important than the facts that you cite. Here are my conclusions. When it comes to racial disparities, race does not cause crime, obviously. Right? Culture causes crime, which is why poverty tends to correlate very highly with crime, regardless of population, but is not the same among all population groups. Right? Disparities in arrests by race are not evidence of racism. If you want to stop the criminal disparity rate, all you have to do is something simple. Stop as individuals committing crimes. Okay? This is the best way to fight disparities in the crime rate. People, the police only respond to calls that a crime has occurred. Okay? That means that if you stop committing crimes, you're going to be arrested less often. Continuing and widening disparities in racial wealth are connected to decision making. Okay, it is true that when it comes to history, okay, that, that black people in the United States, because of all the discrimination, start off at a lower point wealth-wise than white people in the United States. Of course, that's true. But it is also important to note that there are groups that have come to the United States with nothing and are in the top income earners in the United States. Right? The fact is that, as I mentioned, the highest income earning group in the United States are Asian Americans. When my great-grandparents came to the United States in 1907, they literally had nothing and didn't speak English. And now my parents did well, my grandparents did well, and I'm doing well. Right? The idea is not, does history leave people differently off? Because that's always been true. Right? There are always different populations that are worse off or better off under any regime historically. The question is, what do we do right now to make your life better? And sitting around and saying that history has made things bad for me does not solve anyone's problems. You have to identify the problem right now that needs to be solved. And if you're not identifying the problem that needs to be solved and suggesting solutions for those problems, you are part of the problem. Because now you are saying to people there are obstacles that you as an individual cannot overcome. Okay. How about female victimhood? So here's my opinion on female victimhood. Women are not victims in the United States. This is an asinine contention. Women in the United States are the best off women in the history of mankind, and it is not close. When it comes to men victimizing women, we are with you. My problem with the Me Too movement is not that they are calling out bad men doing bad things. More of this. Name them. Okay, I want to stand alongside you and say that these men should go to jail. Okay, I'm as clean on this score as anyone in American public life. I was a virgin until marriage. Okay, I 
do not hang out with women who are not my wife. I am very, I, I'm, I'm of the Mike Pence mindset when it comes to this stuff. Okay, the fact is, the fact is that I want to see men who mistreat women. I was brought up like this. I have three younger sisters. Men who mistreat women are the worst people on planet Earth, and they should pay the worst penalties on planet Earth. But it doesn't help anybody when you conflate systems of uh, people who are oppressive with people who you just don't like. Right? When you come out and you say that Aziz Ansari is a sexual abuser or a sexual assaulter because you went on a date with him, performed oral sex on him and got naked in his apartment twice, and then you say, oh, he took it the wrong way, and the next morning you say, oh, well, I didn't feel good about that, I'm not going to treat you the same as the lady who was raped by Harvey Weinstein. Sorry. Right? This is not oppression of women. This is called having a rational standard for behavior. Okay? As far as the argument that women are victimized by people like me who say that women should bear the children they conceive, the answer is because I think the child has value, not because I'm trying to oppress you. I don't care what you do with your body at any other time. I do care what happens to the child that is inside your body. And it would not matter whether that child was outside your body or inside your body. I don't think that you should kill babies. Okay. On income, here is my conclusion from the facts that I have cited. You are not tied to your class in America. You can rise, you can fall. Your power is in your hands. No one is standing in your way. If someone is standing in your way, you need to name the person. If there's a policy standing in your way, you need to name the policy. Don't just say that society is barring you from succeeding, particularly not if you're going to a good university like UConn. Don't tell me that people in, in America are standing in your way and telling you you can't succeed. No one gives a damn about you. No one cares if you succeed or not. And that means also, the, the bad news is no one cares about you. The good news is that, uh, the good news is that because no one cares about you, no one cares about stopping you. No one cares. So go out and do your best and make something of yourself. You're not a victim. Okay, and then finally, on transgenderism. Great sympathy for everyone who is suffering from this. It does no good for a society to lie about sex in order to supposedly make people feel better. Lies are not a path to virtue nor a path to sanity. Truth is a path to both of these things. This does not mean you can't treat people with cordiality. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't have manners. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't be kind to people. It does mean that it is an imposition on me to ask me to lie about the nature of basic biological facts because it is going to offend you. And my friend Jordan Peterson did a great interview in Britain the other day in which, uh, in which Jordan specifically was asked about this. This woman asked him, why does your right to free speech trump my right to be offended? And he said, because if it doesn't, there is no right to free speech. Right? Because People are saying things that offend each other all the time. This is how we get to truth. Right? Here's my other opinion on this. Pronouns have always applied to biological categories, not subjective states of mind, or even outward appearance. The idea, by the way, that, that pronouns should be applied simply to outward appearance would make every Bugs Bunny cartoon ever really ridiculous. Right? Every time Bugs jumps into the dress to try and seduce Elmer Fudd to get him to leave him alone, we'd have to call Bugs a female bunny. That's not how this works. <laughs> to claim something that is objectively untrue as reality is not fact-based thinking. To insist that you are a man and, and uh, to insist that, uh, that a falsehood is a fact is delusional. If you are a man, you're a biological man, you claim that you are in fact a woman, this is not true. Okay, it's just not true. You may feel like a woman. I don't know what, how that would even operate considering that if you're a man, I don't know how you would feel like a woman. It's, it's like saying that I as a, as a man could feel like, like something completely different. I'd feel like a, like a chicken. Like I can't feel like a woman, I'm not a woman, right? I can feel like maybe I don't belong in my body, but, but that, that, it seems like you're jumping to an identity that you've never actually occupied. But this delusion corresponds to significant levels of depression and suffering, which is why I have said that gender identity disorder is a mental illness and should be treated as such, rather than being foisted off on society as some sort of flaw in society that we could all fix if we just started using preferred pronouns. There's not enough evidence to support that position by any stretch of the imagination. Now listen, as I say, you can argue with any of these conclusions, but you will have to explain why the facts that I cite are either incorrect or why they do not lead to the conclusions that I have stated. Some people, however, are so deeply offended that they feel no need to offer an argument. Instead, they just claim offense. They claim that they're victims, and now they win the argument. You don't need to play this game, because it is a game, and it's a stupid game. They claim I'm just being offensive, or I've microaggressed them, or I'm invading their safe space. Okay, facts are not microaggressions. Facts are facts. No space should be free from facts or safe from facts. Those who insist that I respect their truth, they don't have any truth. They have opinions. Those opinions often oppose truth. I am far more justified in ignoring opinions unsupported by facts than they are in dismissing facts that support my opinion. Okay, we can't have a conversation without a common basis in fact. If those facts offend people, so be it. I can live with that. Facts don't care about your feelings. Thanks so much.